National scene. An archaeological expedition in West Germany has discovered a secret cache of weapons, which seems to have been buried since World War. One mini weapon still. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. That's World War One. Many weapons. Oh, what a shame! Just a few more minutes, he would have gotten through the whole show without a mistake. Nose room. Oh, hi, Marie. What? Look, calm down, honey. What's the matter? I don't know. Marie, Marie, now just say it slowly. What is it? She thinks the hot water heater's busted. What? Oh, no, honey, I can't. You can't what? Well, she wants me to rush right home. Well, Marie, why can't you? Look, there's only a few more minutes to go on the show. I'll cover for you. I'm on my way, honey. Mary's going to cover for me. Hey, thanks, Mary. I'll cover for you anytime you want. Now, you sure you know what to do? Yes, I'm sure. If a bulletin comes in over the teletype, just type it up and get it into the studio. No. Yeah. Murray, don't worry. If anything comes over the wire, I can handle it. Will you go on? All I have to do is take it off the machine, type it up, and get it into test. Talk. Outskirts of town. Wow, I didn't know that there was a munitions plant on the outskirts of town, did you? Mary! Yes, I know. I've got to type this up really fast and whip it into Ted before he goes off the air. Don't worry, Mr. Grant, I'll have it in just a second. Now, let's see. Um, Yeah, so am I. Look, I'll do it. Can't let you do everything around here. Hello. I think we had a winner tonight, don't you, Mayor? Mr. Grant, I'm so sorry. It's all my fault. What's wrong? I wanted you to read this. All righty. <laughs> A fiercely burning fire is now racing across an open field. No, Ted, that's not quite what I had in mind. Don't I get to find out how it ends? <laughs> Tune in the competition's 7 o'clock news. They ought to have it by then. Boy, I am just terrific. I've been here for over a year, and I can't even write up a simple news bulletin. That's not your job. Well, what is, Mr. Grant? I mean, I am the associate producer. I feel like I'm taking the money under false pretenses. Why, those newscasters on the West Coast get all the breaks. How's that, Ted? Well, it's two hours earlier out there, and they get to do this story. I mean, out there, this fire hasn't even started yet. <laughs> and you're worried about taking money under false pretenses? <laughs> on Mr. Grant's face. If it had been anybody else but me, they would have been fired right then and there. Don't be silly. You do a great job. And besides, they love you there. Oh, sure, but why? Because I'm fun or something. Sometimes I get the feeling that I'm making it on my personality instead of my ability. That's a problem I've never had. Beat you to it, didn't I? <laughs> I don't think Mary's making it on her personality. I mean, Mary. <laughs> You have certain abilities. The trick is to work on improving them. You know, believe it or not, uh, I too once had a feeling of inadequacy. We're not going to hear about your honeymoon again. 
I was about to suggest that you take a course, a journalism course. Wait, I'll get you my college catalogs. Oh, well, no, that's, don't go all the way downstairs, Phil. Some other time. You, <laughs> you carry college catalogs in your purse? Well, you never know when you might need to take a course. Adult education extension courses. You know, this might not be such a bad idea. It is a wonderful idea. Do you see anything that appeals to you? Well, yeah, television journalism. Emphasis on writing for the medium, introductory and advanced. Uh, let's take introductory. Let's take? Yeah, I'm going to take the course, too. What for? Because, Mary, you are a golden person. A what? Next time your fairy godmother comes to visit, when she swoops down on you, I want to be sure I'm right there at your side. <laughs> that way, when she waves her magic wand, some of the old gold dust will sprinkle down on me. Oh. Well, listen, I don't feel I have been that sprinkled on lately, but if you want to come and take the course, fine. It's coincidental that you should make that analogy, Rhoda. I often think of my life with Lars as a kind of fairy tale. <laughs> really, Phil? Which one of the seven dwarfs do you see him as? <laughs> I take a course in television journalism. I mean, to learn what goes on behind the cameras. I mean, after all, I, uh, I am in the business. Uh, what, what do you do in the business, Mr. DeForest? I'm a TV repairman. <laughs> oh, well, good. I, I hope you can learn something here. Uh, yes, next, please. My name is Mrs. Marshall, Mr. Whitfield, and uh, I'm uh, just a housewife. I'm here because I want to fulfill myself enlarge my horizons, and participate in an enriching life experience. And the ceramics class was filled. Well, I, I'm, I'm sorry about ceramics, Mrs. Marshall, but welcome to television journalism. Thank you. Oh, my name is uh, Mary Richards, and uh, I, too, am in the business of... Uh, I guess I'm here to get some uh, formal background to go with the uh, practical on-the-job experience that I do have. Uh, what do you do in the business? Well, I am uh, the associate producer of a television news show, the uh, 6 o'clock news over at uh, WJM-TV. Oh. Well, I, uh, I'm complimented you chose our little class. You feel free to straighten me out if I make any mistakes. Oh, sure, I'd be glad to. <laughs> I'm sure that uh, won't be necessary. You know, you're doing just fine. <laughs> Thanks for the vote of confidence. Yes, please. Oh, yes. My name is Miss Rhoda Morgan. <laughs> and I'm here because uh, she's here. I mean, I'm not in showbiz or anything, but... I guess I'm what you news people would call an interested bystander. Well, I, I hope I can keep you interested, Miss Morgenstern. You're doing fine so far. <laughs> Cutie. Now, this uh, is the required text for the course. The author's name is Dan Whitfield, which is the same as mine, which is why it's the required text. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not on the bestseller list yet, uh, but at last count, it had sold, uh, three, six, nine, twelve copies. <laughs> now, during this semester, we'll be talking about objective journalism versus what is now called personal journalism. You know, the sort of, uh, fun and games approach now being adopted by many newscasters. They seem to think that, uh... Yes, Miss Richards? Well, it's just that uh, just yesterday over at uh, WJM, we were discussing uh, whether we should change the news format to make it a more uh, personal, uh, feature-heavy type of program. Yes. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> Well, Miss, Mr. Uh, Grant hasn't uh, made uh, that decision yet. <laughs> well, you, uh, you keep us posted. <laughs> Another topic we'll be covering will be the influence on the culture by the media. Should they lead or simply reflect the culture? That's a question a lot of people are... 
Yes, Miss Richardson? Well, I, it's just that it is so very pertinent to the everyday decisions that we make at the station. But don't you think there's really too much bad news on TV? No, not really. I mean, we have to report the news as it is, not as we would like it to be. I mean, we can't just select what is good and then leave out the rest. We wouldn't be doing our jobs. <laughs> Well, she asked me. I asked him. And those are the fundamentals of any news story. Oh, I see our time is over for tonight. So, uh, oh, unless, uh, uh, unless Miss Richards has something to add. <laughs> I'll see you all next week. Miss Richards, I'd like to see you after class, please. Uh, you don't mind if I wait out in the hall, do you? I'd hate to let friendship stand in the way of my grade. <laughs> uh, I'll be with you in a minute. No, I no, I didn't say anything. Uh, no, I just I had uh, something in my throat. <clears> throat> Miss Richards, while I was. Uh listening to you tonight, a thought occurred to me. May I ask you a perfectly blunt question? Would you like to go out for a cup of uh, coffee with me? Uh, sure. Uh, you, mean, you mean now? I have to turn this into the office. I'll be right back. Why aren't you clapping the races together? Rhoda? <laughs> you will not believe it. You're out of the class, huh? He wants me to go have coffee with him. I knew it. The fairy godmother zooms in, sprinkles you all off. Where am I out in the hall? <laughs> And at the age of 26, he winds up the head of UPI in Chicago. Oh, <laughs> you really like teaching, don't you? Oh, I love it. I mean, it's, it's hard work, long hours, and absolutely no money. <laughs> no, I, I do love it. I mean, how else would I have met you? Well, uh, in a newsroom for one place. <laughs> Had you ever thought of working in one? Yeah, I thought about it so much, I, uh, I even did it for a while. I really hated it. I guess I'm just the, uh, the academic type. Well, I like the academic type. I like your patches. I'll let you know a little secret. that They're not for style. They cover holes. Oh. Hey, you know, it's after one? Is it really? Yeah, I, uh, I may teach night school, but you've got a day job. Yeah, at uh, WJM. I heard, yeah. Oh, well. Listen, Dan, I promise I won't talk so much in class anymore. Now, okay? please, don't not talk. Your enthusiasm was great. It's good for the class, really. Hey, uh, does it bother you that I'm in your class and we're going out? No. <laughs> making that statement this morning. I've just been handed a bulletin. You have something on your front tooth. <laughs> now for the lighter side of the news. He is the lighter side of the news. Finished. Well, what have you been working on there for so long? An assignment for my class. It's a news story on D-Day. Oh, how is it? It's good, I hope. <laughs> Competing this bulletin, American forces in the most tightly kept secret in military history just launched a pre-dawn invasion. No. <laughs> Matt! We're staying on the air. I don't know how long, but we've got the greatest news story here since Z Day. Matt? I was, uh, kidding. <laughs> you know how I kid. Well, take my word for it. Once in a while, I kid. <laughs> Mr. Grant, uh, I wanted to ask you a favor. Why did you leave this lying around where I could read it? 
Oh, Mr. Crazy. You, you, you didn't think that that was... But then, of course, almost anybody would. Uh... And now you want to favor. Yeah, well, Mr. Grant, I sort of volunteered you to speak at my class next week. Sort of. Mary, I don't give speeches. Well, I know, but I thought just this once. There's a reason I don't give speeches. Yeah, but it, no, it isn't a speech. It's just a 15-minute little talk. Mm-hmm. The reason is I don't have what you call the gift of gab. Besides, I don't think I could talk about a subject for 15 minutes. Now, how about three subjects for five minutes each? <laughs> I guess I don't have the old gift of gab either. Uh, Mr. Grant, it's just that I sort of promised, and if, well, as I said, you, you don't have to speak for the whole 15 minutes if, you know, if you didn't, uh, I, I think you'll do it. Anybody got any dental floss? <laughs> Uh, you want me to look over your story and tell you what I think? No, no, that, that's okay. Why don't you want me to read it? Because you'll say it's terrific. That's a reason. Murray, you think everything I do is terrific. Are you always saying nice things to me and complimenting me? Well, why shouldn't I? You're terrific. You see? You're just not objective. Listen, I love it that you think I'm terrific, but on this paper, what I need is good, tough criticism. And you don't think I can be critical? May I have that, please? Please. Thank you. to the subject of news documentaries and the government. Oh, this must be Mr. Grant. Please, come in. Uh, as I told you, thanks to uh, Mary Richards, we're very fortunate tonight in having with us Mr. Lou Grant, the news director of WJM-TV, who will speak on news and news writing. And uh, after the talk, we'll have a question and answer period, if there's time. Uh, Mr. Grant, right here, please. Good news writing is getting the facts, getting them fast, and presenting them well. <laughs> I think we have a little time for the question and answer. Yeah, that's what I figured. I didn't have time to write a speech. I just jotted down a few notes. You want me to read them again? No, no, that's okay. Uh, I think we got the facts. We got them fast, and you presented them well. Uh, questions? Uh, Mr. DeForest. How good are job opportunities in news writing today? Lousy. <laughs> Not enough jobs to go around. Uh-huh. I'd like to know if you'd be interested in buying any freelance writing. Freelance news writing? Yes. I thought I could do it at home. I've got the typewriter and the paper. At home? Where are you going to find this news? The radio, newspapers, what you hear at the market. Uh-huh. Uh, next question, please. Yeah. What you said about getting the facts, uh, Lou, uh, we read in our books. Books? Sometimes... Forget books. You don't learn from books. You learn from... <laughs> but... <laughs> if you're going to read a book, this would be the book to read. <laughs> uh, there aren't any more questions, are there? Good. It's been a real pleasure. A lot of fun. Well, uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Grant, and thank you, Miss Richards, for inviting him. <laughs> and uh, now, before we leave, um, I want to say that I was very pleased, uh, for the most part, with the papers you turned in last week. And uh, I've written some comments along with the letter grade. And if there are any questions, I'd be glad to talk to you uh, individually. Um, there you go. And I'll, I'll see you all next week. So I'll, I'll give you your papers over there. To you. I got a B. I got a B. I got a B, too. Uh, Mr. Grant, I want to tell you how much I really enjoyed your talk. I mean, it's, it's good to hear somebody knows what he's talking about. Well, thanks. So, Mayor, what'd you get? Oh, I, uh, got a C. What? A C. A C? Oh, you're kidding. Let me see your paper. What do you mean you got a C? You got a C plus. It's the same thing. How can he give you a C? C plus. You're a pro. What does that amateur know? I'm going to talk to him. Yeah, Mr. Grant, please don't. It's embarrassing enough without, you know. Listen, I, I appreciate how you feel. Well, okay. See you tomorrow. Right. Gee, Mayor, I I'm really sorry, kid. Hey, do you think there's some mistake? No. Did you read the comments there by the grade? Maybe that would explain it. This subject is well-trod ground, so needs a fresh approach. Check sources more carefully, flowery writing. Where are we going tonight? <laughs> I'll trade you my B for your where are we going tonight. <laughs> Listen, Mayor, you gotta say something to him. Oh, Rhoda, I can't. I mean, what can I say? So you're not gonna say anything? No. Nothing? No, only if he brings it up. Hmm. How you doing? About a C plus. Oh, I suppose you're talking about your grade. Well, as long as you brought it up. Let's talk about it over dinner. I get a C and you want to have dinner? That's all right. I've gone out with C students before. C plus. You're really upset, aren't you? Well, would you tell me why you gave me a C? I mean, just give me one good reason. Okay, I gave you a C plus because I thought that's what your paper deserved. But Mrs. Marshall... Got a B, yes, I know. Well, I think I know a little bit more about news than Mrs. Marshall. You know a lot more about news than Mrs. Marshall. You're an associate producer. You're a professional. I mean, I have to grade you on a different scale than I grade Mrs. Marshall. She came because ceramics was filled. Why did you come? To become better at my job. But a C plus. Well, uh, a C is, is average. And that's what you are right now. An average professional. What about the plus? Well, I, I couldn't keep my personal feelings entirely out of it. <laughs> Morning, Mary. Hey, how did Lou do last night? He was concise. And your term paper, how'd you do? An A? No. A plus? Murray. Well, there isn't anything higher. C plus. C plus. <laughs> you know, for a first paper, a C plus, that's terrific. <laughs>